Alrighty, morning everyone and welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on another beautiful day. In today's video I want to talk about gold or rather why the size of the gold that you're buying is actually a pretty relevant thing to go by. And you know, smaller coins have a lot of benefits that bigger coins don't have and bigger coins have a lot of benefits that smaller coins don't have. And so I think it's worth taking a look at what these benefits and, uh, you know, and, and disadvantages are and why it's reasonable to buy the one coin or why it might also be reasonable to buy another coin. And for some reason that's a very controversial topic. I'm not here for that though, so I really don't care if you want to be offended by my opinion about that. Uh, but you can choose to do so, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure why you would. But uh, yeah, we're just going to get right into it and start with our little coins that I brought for you here today. And today I have one of each size of the Gold American Eagle from different years, it doesn't really matter, um, but we've got a one ounce here, half ounce here, quarter ounce here, and one tenth ounce there, in case you just didn't know in which sizes they come. And, you know, obviously, the smaller coins are going to be the ones with the higher premiums. That is usually the case with all kinds of coins. Why is that? Because it's a, ve it's a very similar uh, amount of work to produce a one tenth ounce coin uh, in comparison to a one ounce coin. Because, you know, you've got a machine that basically does exactly the same thing, just with a different size stamping thing, right? So it's not really that much different in uh, work. Now, of course, there is a significant price difference between a one-tenth ounce coin and a uh, one ounce coin, which, you know, is not 10 times more. It's actually a little bit more. It's it's going towards uh, to, uh, about 11 times more, right? Because you approximately pay between 11 and 12% in markup uh, on the one-tenth ounce coin and approximately 3% on the one ounce coin. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a reference, uh, the half ounce coin goes for about 5% in markup and the quarter ounce for between 8 and 9 over here. Yeah, And, and that's basically the cheapest price that I can find uh, somewhere around here in uh, Europe. Unfortunately, in Europe, would love to be over there in America. Makes a lots of makes lots of things easier when it comes to you know precious metals and stuff like that. But uh, whatever, you know, we're here to talk about these coins today. So, of course, that is not great because you're essentially getting one extra uh, half uh, half ounce. Yeah, that would be great. One extra one tenth ounce coin um, whenever you're buying, you know, the one ounce coins as opposed to the one tenth ounce coins. So. One might ask, yeah, well, what's the point in buying the one tenth ounce coin then? And, you know, the point is pretty obvious. This is about, you know, not really one tenth, but we're just going to call it one tenth of the price of this one. So someone that can afford this can't necessarily afford this. And so that is a very obvious reason why this is a necessary size. Because, you know, if you can't spend 2,000 bucks on a gold coin, or if you just don't make that amount of money in any reasonable time, uh, you know, I I know people that don't make that in the whole year. So how are, you, how are they supposed to get that together? Not really at all, I, I would suggest. So... There's really no point in saying, yeah, well, but you should just save out, uh, save up for a one ounce coin. Yeah, some people can just not do that, okay? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, well, of course, if you're making like your $30,000 uh, a year or something like that, it's very easy for you to probably save up for a one ounce coin in like a year or two. But they're just people that don't make that in like 10 years. So, you know, you got to think about stuff like that when you're saying that. Um, it's not the same all around the world, okay? So I'm very fortunate that I can buy these coins. And my financial position is getting better and better and better. I was only making like 200 bucks a month like a few years ago. So, you know, and just because I just basically stood on the gas and did the best that I can uh, to get the best out of my financial position and, and situation and whatnot uh, and never stopped improving on that uh, end, now I'm able to buy stuff like that, but, you know, if someone told me, like, three years ago, yeah, well, how about you just buy a one-ounce coin, it's a lot cheaper, and I would say, yeah, well, if you give me one, I'd, ra I'd rather do that, of course, but, you know, it's not going to happen, so I'm going to buy what I can afford, and that's why these coins are important, and another important thing about them also is that smaller sizes 
give you the advantage of being able to sell smaller quantities of, of money, basically, to liberate smaller quantities of money from gold. Because, of course, most shops nowadays don't really take gold coins anymore. I would if I had a shop, but, you know, most don't. And uh, therefore, you got to sell the coins before you can do something with the money, uh, besides, you know, having the coins around. And um, if you don't want to sell $2,000 worth of gold, but you only have one ounce gold coins, well, you have to, if you need money. But if you've also got smaller sizes, and you need, for example, like, just 500 bucks to, to you know, pay for rent this month or something like that, if you get into a difficult financial position, which can happen to everyone, right, uh, then you can just sell a quarter ounce. And you still have three quarters of the ounce that you would otherwise just have sold and then have lain around in, 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 in fiat currency that you don't really want it in the first place. So I think it is reasonable to have these and these markups that you're paying on these coins, you're getting them back. If you're selling it to a private uh, to a private person like, through like some sort of private selling thing, whatever you might choose to, to use for that, uh, you're getting it back. You're getting the markup back because everyone has to pay the markup anyways if they, if they buy it as a, at a bullion dealer. So you're getting most of the markup back. You have a smaller size that you can, you know, uh, of course sell and and get the money out that way but you could also theoretically if we would ever get into a situation like that you could also trade with that it's not very easy to trade with something like this because this is basically the value of an average car in a situation like that um, so what would you do with that tell someone yeah i'm just gonna take everything that you're farming this month for this coin no one's really gonna do that but if you say you know i would like to have like five bags of wheat or something like that. I don't know what five bags of wheat is worth. I don't really farm wheat. Um, I, I only do stuff like potatoes and stuff like that. Uh, you know, would you take this small one-tenth ounce coin for that? I don't know. Most people would probably consider that. I would consider that. I would certainly give someone like maybe even ten bags of potatoes, like the big bags, like the 50 kilo bags, uh, for, for a coin like that. So I don't know where the problem is with that. I think that's a very reasonable thing. Actually, thinking about that, uh, 50 bags would probably be more towards like a quarter ounce or something like that. Uh, 10 bags, I mean, 10, 50 kilo bags. But, I mean, you get the point, right? These numbers don't have to be accurate, it's just an example. So, yeah, I, I think you pretty much get the point. I just wanted to give you a general idea of why the smaller sizes can also be useful. But now I want to talk about the bigger sizes and why they are probably your best bet if you want to get the most gold for your money. And it is obviously, the main part of that is obviously the markup, right? A 3% markup on a 1 ounce coin is a significantly less uh, big amount, weird sentence, but is a significantly lower amount uh, than you would pay on the same amount in 1 tenth ounce coins. Uh, that is certainly a thing, right? And if you just want to get the most gold for your money, you know, the 1 ounce coin is really your best bet, unless you want to buy something really big, uh, like, like, a, like a kilo bar or something like that, or maybe even a 100 gram bar, uh, they go for cheaper like a lot cheaper maybe like two two and a half percent cheaper even than the one ounce coins and of course the gold eagle isn't the most or the least expensive gold coin uh, you can get some with like one and a half maybe two percent markup uh, maple leaves don't don't really go for that much um, and crew rents probably also don't i've seen those around for like around two percent so yeah there are some cheaper alternatives but i just like the eagle so i'm buying those um but with the one ounce gold coins, of course, you've got a big advantage with stuff like recognizability, right? Just mainly because the one ounce gold coin is basically uh, the gold standard, so to say, uh, for gold coins all around the world. Everyone knows what a one ounce gold coin is. And of course, everyone knows what a one ounce gold eagle is because it is, you know, besides maybe the Krugerrand, uh, the most well-known gold coin uh, around the world. Now, the problem with these smaller coins is a lot of people don't even know that you can buy uh, these coins in like half, a quarter and one-tenth ounce sizes, right? So they're going to be like, Ooh, what is that? Why is it not a one-ounce coin? Um, that's a bit of an issue with that. But 
if you're selling the coin to someone that knows what they're talking about, which you should do anyways, I don't really see a problem there. But, you know, that is the main, uh, one of the main advantages of the one-ounce gold coin is just the recognizability of the size and, in this case, also of the coin itself being the gold eagle. So, to come to something that at least closely resembles a conclusion, let's just say the bigger coins in general, if you have the money, are the better option, in my opinion. Right, because they've just got a lot more advantages over the smaller coins than the smaller coins have over the bigger coins. See, really, the only advantage over the smaller coins uh, this, that the smaller coins have over the bigger coins, Jesus, uh, is that they are smaller, basically. Right, so you have to pay less for them, um, and that's about it. So, yeah, but um, I think it's also impo important to say if you can't afford a bigger coin, don't feel bad about buying a smaller one. Right, because chances are this is going to be inconsequential anyways. If you're maybe like at the beginning of your career and you you want to make a lot of money in the future, um, or you're in a financially bad situation, and that's why you can't buy a bigger coin at the moment. Chances are that's go not going to stay like that for long. So I don't think it really matters in the end. And if you really can't afford a bigger coin, I really don't see a reason uh, why you should then just like not buy anything i i don't i really don't think that's a good choice but you know if you want to you can do it that way as well i don't mind that this is just my opinion so yeah uh, this is basically it for today's video really hope you enjoyed it if you want to you know write anything in the comments feel free to do so i'll be very happy to answer those as always and you can also subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any other videos so yeah thank you very much for watching have a fantastic week and until next time